Thanks, Samantha. I appreciate the uh, the invite here, uh, and thank you all for joining as well. Uh, I'm joined with uh, Scott Champo. He's our regional manager for the Texas office. He hey, everybody. Works very, he works very closely with the uh, Reese team. So you, uh, if if you had any chance to go to our showroom or work with the Reese team on any Mamaki products, you'll most likely interface with Scott at some point. So hi, Scott. Hi. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for the opportunity. It's great to be here. So. Uh, that being said, uh, my name is Michael Maxwell. I, I'm the senior manager for our corporate uh, strategic development group here at Mamaki USA. Uh, again, I wanted to throw out a thank you in advance to all of you and your time. Uh, I know that this is a uh, an interesting time that we're in. Uh, so Reese has uh, really stepped up and put together a forum where we can uh, share some of this information. And hopefully uh, some of this information will not only help you with uh, future efforts, but also with the efforts that you have today as you're trying to adjust your business practices and uh, make sure that your business has uh, everything that it needs in order to be as efficient as possible. So we got to uh, a discussion with the team over at uh, at Reese, and we decided we wanted to go through a, a bit of the technology. And we're going to tap on the, the technology that we have as it relates to the Mamaki product line, but it certainly is something that may exist on your other products if you don't have a Mamaki product. Uh, we would hope that you would uh, consider us in the future if you don't, but uh, for right now, I'd like to touch on a few items that are uh, extremely important to us, and we really enjoy having them on our product line. Uh, so what I want to do today is I want to go through some of the technology that's existed. So printing technology in general is pretty much the same when you're looking at uh, one product over another, but it's the things that are built into the machine that will address potential problems or uh, trouble points for you as you're producing uh, that really separate the, the product out from other products. So uh, we wanted to touch on what we call core technologies. Uh, these uh, technologies exist on uh, every Mamaki product. Uh, we have uh, usually several of them on the product. Uh, most of them are focused on four particular tenets of, of what we're trying to achieve. So uh, for us, quality, uh, reliability, productivity, and price are the, the, the four things we really want to make sure that we address uh, with our customers. So when we look at the features that we add, we don't want to ever take anything away from the equipment if we don't have to. So we always want to take that product and we want to make sure that we have some sort of a, uh, a fail safe in there for different reasons, uh, whether it's an image quality or being able to run the machine unattended or being able to run the machine consistently uh, without any color shifts or variations of your print quality uh, over you know long runs, short runs, whatever you're trying to do and make sure that the machine is responsive when you want it to be. And we want to do this in as much of a cost effective way as possible. So. Uh, one of the quick things about Mamaki is that we are a 96% in-house manufacturing. Uh, we manufacture the equipment, the, the ink, and the software. Uh, a lot of uh, customers don't realize that we manufacture everything for the entire line. So we're able to actually build the product with a lot of these features built in that will address, again, any, any trouble points that you might have uh, as you're producing. So for those of us that have a printer, know that the, from time to time things do happen. Uh, so hopefully some of the information that we're providing today, uh, even if you don't have a Mamaki product, you might have one of these features on your printer and you may not realize how effective it can be for you. So that being said, this is kind of a, a quick snapshot of what we're going to go through. Uh, I want to go into a little bit more detail here for you uh, on the, uh, the Mamaki side. So the first stop is our waveform control. Again, because we manufacture the ink and the software and the equipment, we can really control uh, the chemistry that goes to the machine. And what we can do with the print head is we can actually fine tune uh, the, the printer to the, the, the viscosity and the, the weight of the ink. So we can get the ink to come out of the head as efficient as possible. Uh, the way I usually describe it is uh, like a race car. You're not going to go to a Formula One or a NASCAR event and see them put 87 octane gas in the, in the tank, right? They're going to put something that's specially tuned for that engine. So we do the same thing on the ink side. What we do is we make sure that the ink is going to perform the best that it can for the intended applications. And then we make sure that the equipment that we're building, whether it's a roll to roll printer or a flatbed, is going to be able to jet that ink out as efficiently as possible. And part of the waveform control gives us a lot more control over the dot size and the dot direction. So we're able to actually drop those dots exactly where we want them to. And we're able to do that in a very efficient way so that the drop comes out very symmetrical 
And when it lands, it gives us better dot gain. And that does a couple things. One, it allows us to be more efficient with the product without having to add faster motors. For example, we can produce a higher quality or higher apparent quality images at a lower resolution. But it also improves the, the longevity of the product. Uh, it allows the print head to not be overdriven or underdriven, which allows it to be as efficient as possible so that over time you get the maximum amount of life out of that print head as possible. So we try to stretch out as much time with that machine before you have to get into any kind of uh, heavy maintenance uh, where you might replace a part or something like that. So we've really put a lot of time and effort into this. There are other inks that are available in the market uh, that, that may work just fine as well. Uh, but when you have a finely tuned combination of the ink and the architecture, it really does make a difference on your image quality and on your ability to run that machine for a long time. So I know this is kind of a visual representation on the screen here, uh, but what we see with the, uh, the waveform control is we see a very clear and crisp image, and it really shows up in the solid colors and the tonal jumps. So when we're going from a skin tone from a, a light area to a darker area, it's really uh, smooth and it's nice and it looks very natural as opposed to uh, a noisier image that you might get where your drops aren't as efficiently placed or efficiently shaped. So that waveform control is a critical piece to the, uh, the quality that we're able to produce. But waveform control is no good if the ink falls on the material and moves around or it doesn't stay where it's supposed to. So what we've done is on the products that require it, we have uh, an intelligent heater set up. And we may have uh, several heaters. Uh, our most common uh, array is going to be a pre, a print, and a post heating uh, setup. But on some of our other machines, we might have additional post heating, or we might have some additional uh, heaters that are uh, you know able to be added on after the fact. So this creates an environment for two different things. One, it it allows the material that you're printing to to lay down nice and uh, smoothly. But it also gives the ink a very receptive uh, layer to, to print onto. So it allows the drop, if you will, when it's moving uh, out of the print head to stick the landing when it hits where it's supposed to go. So we're able to accurately place it. And then with the heaters, we're able to actually get that ink droplet to just stop right where we want it to. And that creates a very good uh, quality uh, on, on all of your prints that allows you to continue to produce efficiently throughout the entire production line. So you don't have to worry about uh, the, the quality changing throughout the image, uh, it's going to be very consistent because we're always placing that drop exactly where we want to. Uh, so it improves your image quality and it also, with the post-processing, allows you to dry your ink in a much quicker time frame. So uh, depending on the ink technology they're using, if you're using like a solvent or a water-based ink like a latex or a dye sub, it allows you to dry that ink in a much faster uh, rate of speed so that you can get to doing the other things that you need to do with that, that, that piece of, uh, you know, graphic or whatever, whatever, if you need to bring it to a laminator or if you need to cut it or anything else, this aids in that process. So this is a very uh, unique way of doing things with the waveform control. It creates a very good environment for image quality, again, even at those lower resolutions. But as we're moving the material through, there are other things to consider, right? So when we're moving a print head back and forth and we're dropping ink out of the print head, that's one motor and that gives us one capability. But pulling uh, an additional set of uh, mass, for example, like a roll of a heavy roll of banner, it does create uh, some challenges to make sure that the material moves at the most efficient way possible so that you get the most uh, image quality that you can get out of the, the print. So what we've done is we've created a, an advanced pass system, which allows us to interlace uh, one pass with the next. And it creates an opportunity, even if there's a slight mechanical deviation when we're moving the material through, it's able to uh, hide that uh, effectively so that it doesn't show up in your image and it doesn't represent uh, you know, a bad image quality. It also creates a couple of other things for us, like on the UV curable side. If you've ever gone to a show or you've ever seen a sample off of a bi-directional print off of a UV printer, in a lot of cases, the UV ink will uh, represent differently depending on the direction that the printer was moving when it produced the drop. So if you look at it, uh, some people call it lawnmower banding, we call it chromatic banding, but basically that is the physics of the ink and when it's cured, even though the ink droplet is falling uh, consistently where it's supposed to, it may have a slight variation in its, uh, its shape in one direction or the other depending on which way the printer head is moving. And that light's going to refract off that dot in a different angle, which creates either a darker or a lighter uh, image. 
So that is able to be overcome with pass systems like the Mamaki's advanced pass system because it interlaces one pass with the next. So now we're not able to overcome the physics of the drop and the way that it's cured, but we're able to interlace enough drops so that it doesn't show that hard transition from one direction to the other, which is great. And it also helps with smoother gradations as well. So that waveform control, those intelligent heaters, and that Mamaki advanced pass system, those three combinations of things uh, are able to create a much, much more efficient way of printing, even at lower, higher, lower resolutions, higher speeds. And it also creates a, a much better image quality that's sellable at those ranges. So those three things are really, really popular on, on the products. And again, you might have a, a couple of these on your product. Uh, I would encourage you to get your operation guide and review it uh, to see if they exist, especially if you haven't uh, taken advantage of uh, you know, different uh, settings on there. But when we're printing, we want to make sure that the printer is actually producing a drop. Uh, so this is a really, really unique thing to Mamaki. So there are other products on the market that we know of that have a nozzle mapping feature or a way to compensate for a uh, nozzle dropout. But no other manufacturer has the one-two punch like this where we have a way for the printer to actually tell itself whether or not it's producing a drop. So uh, for those of us that have been in the industry for a while, uh, you know, the, the old stories of uh, producing a uh, job and you come back and you find out one of your ink channels stopped in producing a color, for example, like magenta or yellow, and you've wasted all that time and material, and it's just a big waste for you. You have to go back and reprint the job, and maybe you, you're late delivering it to your customer. It creates a you know a compound effect. What our system can do is it can, in real time, actually monitor whether the printhead is producing a drop, and it can report back to itself and say, okay, depending on what you want uh, as a, an acceptable amount of uh, ink drops out, you can say, I don't want any, or I want maybe one or two is acceptable. And you set that per channel, per color. So that allows us to give you full control over what that quality is going to be. And it allows the machine in real time to monitor itself. So that by itself is really great. It can come back and it can actually see if the drop was in. And it can do a series of functions if something does not happen correctly. So if, if a drop, like represented in this uh, image here, if a drop is missing, it can actually do a cleaning cycle and it can try and recover. So that allows you the peace of mind that if you're not standing in front of the printer, and it is going to try and clean itself and recover it. And if it passes, it's going to continue to print. If it doesn't pass, then what's going to end up happening is it's either, it can activate a self uh, setting where it actually goes through and it finds out which nozzle is not firing and it maps it out. So it can actually go through and do an automatic mapping feature. Again, this is for unattended operation. Uh, I think that's really critical right now uh, for a lot of customers because your, your shops are down. Maybe your employees are working remotely. Maybe you've got a very uh, limited amount of staff that's coming in. If you have one of our products and you haven't activated these features, we encourage you to do that because it allows you to walk away from the machine and feel confident while you go answer the phone or do your taxes if you decided to wait till July 15th to do your taxes this year, it gives you the ability to go and do those other things that you would need to do in your operation while the printer is doing its thing. So you don't have to sit there and babysit the printer. And that's a fantastic feature. And it reduces your labor cost overall because you don't have to have someone standing there monitoring the machine. They can go and do something else, whether it's cutting something down or preparing a sign or whatever you need to do. And it improves the image consistency, right? Because we don't have to worry about nozzles dropping out. So we can actually set this, and this is all accessible to the operator. You can set it to whatever threshold you want per channel, per color. So this is a great way for you to accept what is and what is not acceptable for image quality coming out of your product. And then it gives you again that peace of mind that it's going to continue to produce efficiently at the beginning of the job and at the end of the job. If you happen to be using a machine with some sort of a special color, uh, this is built into every machine that supports either a white, a clear, or a metallic silver ink. Uh, Mamaki does not uh, take this away. It's not an option. It's built into the machine. So even if you haven't uh, taken advantage of a, an advanced color set that uses a white or a silver, for example, the, this is in there. And this is why it's called the core technology, because it's built into the machine. So down the road, if you decide you know what, I, I need to convert my machine to use white or metallic silver. You've already got everything you need in order to do that. So we, we don't try to uh, create a, a challenging way for you to either move into a different uh, type of printing or to change the uh, the way that the machine is designed for, for your particular uh, 
you know, environment. So if you're trying to do just four color work right now and you decide down the road you need white and you need clear, so the machine accepts those types of inks, you've already got everything you need in the machine. And the circulation technology is very simple. Uh, there are other machines in the market that do it as well. It's certainly not unique to Mamaki, but what we've done is we've reduced the amount of maintenance that's required with these special inks. So white, silver, they coalesce very easily. They tend to get clogged. They tend to have more maintenance issues. We've really removed a lot of that headache with this type of technology. So depending on the machine, we'll move it through the, uh, the, the lines. We'll keep it basically like a river of ink moving through. You'll hear the machine pumping the ink. Uh, we'll even move it through the dampers of the head so that we reduce the amount of wear and tear on the, uh, the parts because of heavy cleanings. And it really makes your, uh, your, your machine much more efficient. And it also allows you to get to printing much quicker. So in years past, you would have to do a lot of heavy maintenance in order to get this prepared. And then you'd have to make sure that you ran that machine for a duration of time. And then if you let it sit up, you'd have to go through that maintenance again. This reduces a lot of that to a very minimal amount. So with a, just a few minutes every day, you're able to keep your machine healthy. And with things like the circulation technology, it really takes a lot of the pain away from using those special inks. So if you have considered in the past adding a, a white or a silver or a clear to your workflow, uh, and you have one of our pieces of equipment, uh, you'll have these pumps built into the machine. And it's a fairly simple process. So uh, if, if you decide to go that route, you'll reach out to Reese uh, in this case and, and ask them for some support on uh, converting it. But it's, it's already in the machine. So we try not to make it too difficult for you to expand your business with the product down the road. In addition to that, we also offer a bulk ink system, which is uh, very unique to us. Uh, and, and we think it's pretty unique in the market in that it, it's a graduation bulk ink system. So certainly you can install it right out the gate and start using it. And you can realize the savings because we're not manufacturing the ink with a cartridge around it. We're manufacturing it in a bladder. Uh, so typically you're looking at about a 21% savings over the cartridge just because of the materials, the raw materials that are used. But the great thing about this bulk ink system is that it's integrated in the machine. It doesn't require you to modify the machine in any way. It doesn't require a technical uh, you know, expertise. It's, it's easy to install and it allows you to expand at any time. And you can choose which colors you want to expand with. So. In this case, you're looking at a, a full set that's got all eight uh, bays taken uh, with two liter pouches, and you can see there's some pass-through cartridges. But at, let's say you've got a, a job that requires you to use a lot of magenta and you don't really use the other colors as heavy. You can choose with this setup to only use the bulk ink system for the magenta and still use cartridges for the other colors. And you can do that with any color. It could be orange, could be light black. Uh, you can do this at any time and you can hot swap these as needed. That's really important for our customers because it really gives you control over managing your costs, which again is extremely important right now. So being able to manage your costs and say, okay, I'm going to get that cost savings on the bladder of ink by buying it in bulk. But then if I don't use all of it, I end up wasting that ink. You've not really realized any savings there. So by giving you the ability to mix and match these as needed, gives you full control over that. And you can make the decision as to whether or not to use a cartridge or a bladder and basically at any time, as long as you have the bulking system uh, ready to go or installed on your machine. So this is a great uh, feature uh, with some of our roller roll machines. Uh, some machines have a, a dedicated bulk system built in, uh, which you know, it's based on the, the productivity of the machine and the type of architecture. But if you have a, a water-based or a solvent machine from us and you uh, have thought about graduating to a higher capacity uh, to bring some of your costs down because you can justify it, these bulking systems are a great addition to the machine and they're really easy to get set up. On the cutting side, uh, we have a lot of print and cut devices. We have print and cut combo devices and then we have printers and cutters separate. Uh, these core technologies exist on the cutting devices regardless of where you uh, jump into our ecosystem. So if you're on a print and cut device or a dedicated cutter, you have these features available to you. And some of them are based on the software. Uh, but they're all available to these cutting devices. And all of our machines support a normal cut, which would just be like through a, a standard cut through vinyl with leaving the backing intact. We also support a die cut where you can cut completely through as a complete punch out. And then we do what's called a half cut. And that half cut is a combination of the normal cut and the die cut. And what it allows us to do is leave little perforations behind so we can make a, a cut around to make a decal that's able to be peeled off. But then we can completely uh, expand the shape and we can do what's called a half cut and it'll leave it intact. So as we're moving the material back and forth through the machine, it allows that decal or whatever you're cutting to stay on the roll so it doesn't fall out and create 
challenges with the material feeding or uh, challenges with it getting jammed up. So these are great features that are included. But some of the unsung heroes on the cutting side are the overcut and corner cut features. These are also on every one of our cutting devices. These are fantastic features for making very symmetrical shapes. So any of you that have ever cut a, a, a circle or a triangle or the letter T or the letter E and had to come back and you're, you're trying to weed it out, you might have to go with a little X-Acto blade and, and cut off the, the little bit of uh, leftover material on the edge. What the overcut does and the corner cut does is it actually allows the blade to go slightly past that edge so you get a nice cut. So like on an E or a T, you're going to get a nice clean edge on that and it's going to weed out really nicely. Those features are included. They do need to be activated. Uh, they're in the menu. If you haven't activated them, if you've had any challenges with weeding out uh, even small letters, try these features out. They're really fantastic and they're included on every one of the Mamaki products. And it, it really improves your material usage uh, overall. It reduces the amount of uh, recuts or reprints that you have to do. And in the case of the zero margin crop mark, which is in the middle of the screen there, this allows us to be as efficient as we can with the workspace that you have. So your material has an expense to it. Uh, when you're printing something, typically you have to have some sort of a gutter around the printed object in order for you to cut. So uh, you have to have a space around that for the crop marks, and then you have to have a space between the copies for those crop marks to work. With the zero margin crop marks, we can reuse crop marks from the row before or the column before as the next column. So it allows us to create more tightness in the spacing between our copies, and it creates a much more efficient way to fit as many copies as possible across the material. So this is a design so that you can get that extra copy or extra five copies on that row so you don't have to go to the next feed rate and waste an additional foot or whatever of material depending on how big your job is. So this is a great feature and it's included in our software and it's, it's supported by all of our print and cut devices. And then we get a lot of questions about printing and cutting long jobs. Uh, there is a mechanical deviation on any cutter, whether it's ours or another product, over a certain distance. Uh, and that's because you're feeding material through and you've got uh, different pinch points and all that. But if you use the segment mark features that are built into our machine, you can actually compensate for that. So this is a, a very simple uh, representation on the screen of a flower. If I had a flower that was going to go on the side of a bus and I wanted to make sure that my cuts on the, the bottom of that flower and the top of the flower as accurate as possible, I can set these intermediary segment mark uh, in between uh, the, in the length and I can set them uh, at certain distances so that as I'm getting the material fed out, it will reread that mark and it'll efficiently cut that area and then go to the next section. So I have a complete cuttable object that is as accurate as possible. So again, if you haven't taken advantage of these, these will save you a lot of time and a lot of money and it's gonna really improve your material usage. And again, we, we're, we're trying to make sure that you have the, uh, the tools that you need to be as efficient as possible. Other features to consider on your product, uh, these seem very uh, commonplace and simple, but the pinch wheels, uh, are very uh, unique on the Mamaki product. We give you the full control over the entire array on a fixed printer and on a print and cut device. We have an automated feature built into it. And the pinch wheels are, uh, you know, your, your first way of getting the material through the machine, right? That's going to be the thing that gets your material to feed as accurately as possible. Some materials just don't like to lay down uh, efficiently. Some of them uh, tend to get uh, ripples uh, in them when you... Uh, get moisture on them. So, so like poster papers, there are a lot of poster papers for solvent or uh, for like latex, for example, they do tend to expand and contract a little bit, which create ripples and create uh, challenges with maybe head strikes. Being able to control the pinch wheels individually uh, on our dedicated machines are great. And then on our uh, print and cut devices, you can actually go into the software and tell it which pinch wheels you want to use. And you can actually set the settings on those pinch wheels, uh, either to a high pressure, medium, uh, low pressure or even in an off position. So it gives you full control over those pinch wheels and where they are and how they're going to interact with the material. And again, this really reduces the amount of interaction you're going to have with the machine on the automated side, but it's also going to improve, improve your productivity and it's going to reduce material feed issues. And then when we get to the part where we've done printing, we have the take up unit. And even though the take up unit on our devices seems extremely simple, it's one of the most robust take up units in the market. And we feel it's, it's the best one out there. And we include it with every product that it's needed for. So uh, with the, the take up, 
What it allows us to do is it allows us to take up either a forward wind or re rewind, whichever way we want. Uh, it's very simple to just flip that switch and have the motor run one way or the other. It's a clutch driven, so it slips real easy. It doesn't pull really tight and it, it continues to slip as needed. So that doesn't uh, create any artifact or print quality issues. Uh, when it's taking up. Some of the other uh, take-up units on the market are really strong and they tend to fight against the uh, the pinch wheels. This doesn't because it slips properly and you can adjust that tension so you can tune it into the material that you're using. But the other more important thing that it does in addition to the pinch wheels is if you're doing a print and cut workflow and you have to have the material printed and taken up so it doesn't land on the floor and then you have to back it up again in order to do a cut workflow the take up will actually rewind the material in unison with the uh, the pinch wheel array so it allows the machine to unwind and put some slack without hitting the floor it allows it to pick it back up uh, on the back side efficiently so it's really an unattended operation so if you have an all-in-one device like a ucjv or a cjv this is a great feature uh, that if, if you're doing long runs especially if you're doing lots of decals or something like that it's going to reduce feed issues. It's going to reduce a lot of the interaction you have to go and, and deal with with other products on the market. So these are great. So to kind of wrap things up and we'll get into some questions here, uh, the quality, reliability, productivity, price, those are the, the core tenets of what we're trying to do with the core technologies. Uh, Amaki includes these with uh, with every product that it, it's you know represented on. So depending on the uh, the type of ink that the machine is designed to be used for, the intended application, we've really taken a long look at what the possible pain points are going to be for you as the business owner. And we've included these in the, the machine for you to use. Some of these features do need to be activated. Uh, some of the features that are in there, we found that our customers didn't even realize they existed. So we wanted to take this opportunity. And again, thank you to Reese for giving us the opportunity uh, to, to explain this to you. And I do want to add some questions uh, here at the end. Uh, but before I do that, I want to uh, express uh, my gratitude to everyone in the printing community right now. Uh, we are in a situation where uh, retail businesses are trying to figure out how to be uh, socially uh, aware of the, the current situation. Uh, they're struggling to uh, meet federal and uh, local state guidelines for uh, representation of policies, social distancing practices, everything else. And printing is playing a vital role in that. Uh, I had an experience to go to the uh, the grocery store and they had masking tape on the floor and in every I had talked to one of the uh, the people that work there and they said they have to pull the tape up at the end of the night and they have to put new tape down because it gets worn out throughout the day and you know it gets torn the carts go over and everything else so uh, being able to do floor graphics or uh, window graphics to explain you know store policy of how many people can be allowed in the building at a time or even putting signs out in the parking lot where people can uh, wait. Uh, for their goods to come out. These are really important things, and I won't, won't go into a level of detail. We've done that in a couple of other webinars, but the applications that you all are producing are very critical to the economy being able to get back up and running because restaurants, you know, businesses, retail, hospitals, everybody needs something that we're providing in the print business. So Mamaki wanted to uh, offer an opportunity for us to help you uh, during this time. So these are some of the things that we're doing. Uh, our, this is our continuing commitment to you and your families, right? We want to make sure that you have everything that you need in order to be uh, not only as educated, but also that confidence that once we get through this uh, together, that you're really in a good spot with your business and you didn't have to take any uh, you know, really hard decisions with it. So efforts like this, the Reese U, uh, some of the other webinars we're doing, we're doing partnerships with media manufacturers, technical focused events. We're really trying to provide as much information to you all as possible. And we're partnering with suppliers like Reese to do special promotions to provide some sort of uh, an outlet for you to get up and running as quickly as possible without having to worry about what the cost is going to be, uh, you know, tomorrow and, and maybe three or four months down the road. Uh, Mamaki's also taken uh, quite a bit of uh, time and we've taken uh, a lot of our uh, money and we've done what we've called the wide format investment program. We've taken some of that and we've invested it to buy down rates for you. Uh, we've got up to six months payment relief uh, with below market rates of 3.99. So if you're in a situation where you're having to diversify and add a piece of equipment or your business is growing because you're getting an influx of calls from your local businesses, we want to be able to provide you an outlet where you don't have to worry about choosing between, you know, getting a piece of equipment today and you know, paying your employees, for example. So these these things are uh, really important to us and we want to make sure we give you the, the ability to, to make those choices. And we're also producing some applications. You'll 
you'll see on our website if you happen to go there. Uh, we're doing 2D and 3D applications, ideas. We're providing some guidance on how those are made. And we're also uh, providing files in some cases for you to download so that you can use them in your local communities. In addition to that, we have started an agenda called Together We Print. This is supporting you. You are all our family. Even if you don't have a Mamaki product, we care about the print community. So we want to provide an opportunity for you to connect with other local businesses. So what Mamaki is going to do right now is we are going to uh, take our marketing budget and we're going to provide some of that towards promoting your business through uh, our web presence through social media and even through some advertisements like on uh, websites and through maybe even some print media uh, advertisements. So uh, if you go to our website, you can register, it puts your name in the list uh, and it allows a central place for other businesses to uh, connect with you that may not have been able to find you as efficiently, maybe through Google or something else, right? If you've ever Googled print, you get a lot of results. Uh, so we want to try and streamline that process so that those retail outlets that may not have had a need for you in the past or may not have really uh, reached out to you and didn't realize you were down the street, have a place to go and have a way for you to connect with them. So we're really excited about this, uh, this agenda. Check it out. It's on our website. And it's going to give, uh, we think, some uh, really needed uh, relief to uh, not only you as the print service provider or the cut uh, service provider, but also to the local businesses and your communities. And we're really trying to help you, your families, and all the families of those that are affected uh, during this type of situation. So check it out, and, and we hope to see you on there. So now I'd like to open up the floor.